The first Saw movie was revolutionary. It changed the game for horror in the industry, and whilst being gory, thought-provoking, and having horror elements embedded throughout it, the suspense and the twist that was game-changing for the genre was something that made this movie have the success and mainstream appeal that it had. The twist in this movie is one that gave me a feeling like no other when I watched it for the first time, and the unexpected nature of it was simply amazing. All of what made this first movie so good ultimately allowed it to give birth to a movie franchise that has lasted nearly 20 years and is soon to release its 10th installment. With the 10th movie coming out very soon, I thought I'd break down each of the Saw movies, one a week, in anticipation to the new one being released. So, do you want to play a game? Here is a breakdown of Saw 1. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. And if you enjoy the video, then feel free to hit subscribe. Thanks. The twist explained. Throughout the entirety of this movie, we saw that both Dr. Lawrence Gordon and Adam were locked in this bathroom that was being monitored by the kidnapper the entire time by video surveillance cameras. They were chained up and it seemed as though the only way they were going to be able to escape the room was if they chopped off their foot or leg in order to be freed. Dr. Gordon's wife and daughter had been held hostage by an individual called Zepp who worked with Dr. Gordon, and as the viewer, we were under the impression that he was the mastermind behind the entire operation and was the Jigsaw killer. However, that wasn't the case at all. Zepp was just as much a pawn in Jigsaw's game as to what Adam and Dr. Gordon were. He had a poison that was inside of him that was slow acting and would eventually kill him if he didn't get the antidote. But the only way he could get the cure was for him to complete what the real Jigsaw killer wanted him to do. Dr. Gordon had the task of being told that he needed to kill Adam before the morning in order for his family to be freed and for them to be okay. However, despite making out like Adam was actually killed, with Zepp arriving at the locked-in bathroom, Adam wasn't actually dead. This caused him to pounce on Zepp and kill him in a brutal fashion by bludgeoning him with the top of the toilet. It looked horrific. With Dr. Gordon chopping off his foot after realizing that was the only way that he was going to be able to get out and survive and see his family again, he said that he'd come back for Adam as he was pleading for him to not leave him on his own. But as we saw, he never returned. Tying into the nature of the character and showing us that Dr. Gordon would never change, even after going through the ordeal. This was when the twist occurred. As Adam picked up the tape that showed that Zepp was just as much a part of the game as what he was, in the background, the body that was in the middle of the room for the entirety of the movie and the person who we believed was dead stood up and we saw that John Kramer, the patient that was in the hospital earlier on, revealed himself to be behind it all and that he was in fact alive and was in control of the shocking feature that we saw being present on the both of them. He was the real jigsaw killer. It was revealed here that the key for Adam's chain was in the bathtub and it was washed away when he woke up and got out, which caused the plug to be pulled and for the key to be flushed down, meaning he did have a safe passageway out, unlike the doctor, and I think there's a specific reason for that. Dr. Gordon was in there for one main reason. He had been cheating on his wife and was taking for granted the life that he had, a trait which John Kramer specifically looked for within the victims of his games. This is because John Kramer is terminally ill and knows that he doesn't have long left to live and feels as though life should be appreciated. So there was a specific reason for him being there and there wasn't an easy way for the doctor to get out, other than having to kill somebody, which would showcase him to be the type of character which John Kramer believed him to be. Whereas Adam never truly did anything wrong on the outside world to that level. He was there because he was the individual that was hired by the detective to take photos of Dr. Gordon in secret and to send them to him, as he believed that he was the real jigsaw killer. So Adam had never really done anything wrong. It was just morally questionable if he should be spying on people or not. Hence why I feel his route out of there was very simple and could have given him no harm whatsoever. With John Kramer getting up and Dr. Gordon being the winner, that meant that there had to be a loser, and we saw that John Kramer turned off the lights, shut the door, and left Adam plunged into darkness, making us question if he was ever going to make it out of there. He had no company, no access to the light switch, and no saw that was near him that was intact where he'd be able to cut himself free from the chains. It was dark, and it was a twist that I most certainly didn't expect. The meaning of the movie the main meaning of the first Saw movie is essentially, don't take your life for granted. Live a life where you're good to others, stand by your morals, and take pride in yourself and your family. The games that Kramer creates are designed to be able to allow the victims to escape, 
but you have to go through hell in order to survive, meaning that your life would never be taken for granted again in the future. For example, when we look at Amanda, she escaped, and one would presume that she valued her life afterwards. You go through the pain and the trauma to see just how valuable life is, and after looking death, a torturous, horrific death straight in the eye, it's something that an individual would never want to be near again. So going through hell and coming out the other side is supposed to be transformative and something which paints John Kramer out to not be a villain, but somebody who wants to teach bad people a lesson and make them value what they have. Were there any hidden clues? There were actually a few clues that were hidden in plain sight throughout the entirety of the movie that pointed to the twist that we witnessed unfold right at the end. Prior to witnessing Amanda being inside of the reverse bear trap concoction, we saw that when John Kramer was lying in bed in the hospital with all of the doctors surrounding him, including Dr. Gordon, for a brief moment there was an image of what looked like the trap being illustrated out in front of him. Later on in the movie, we saw that when Detective Tapp found the real jigsaw killers there, we saw that he was an individual that creates smaller versions of the traps models of the surroundings and also diagrams of what it is that he eventually went on to do to his victims. So that was a major hint that was quite literally in front of our eyes, and the doctor's eyes too, even the police, considering they were only in the next room. One of the main clues that was shown to us was right at the start of the movie, but it's only upon the ending that it becomes obvious that it was even a clue. This was when the police went to the location of where one of the previous traps was, the one where there was the candle and all of the numbers that were on the wall. In that room, there was a hole in the wall where the officer stated that he likes to have a front row seat to the games as they unfold. Whilst it could have been representative of the fact that the bathroom was being filmed, the true front seat during that game was on the bathroom floor, where he was able to see everything that was going on as it was unfolding, taking it a level deeper than before when there was a wall that separated them. Another one is regarding the pen that the authorities found and were able to tie to Dr. Gordon. Kramer was lying in the hospital bed with a pen in his hand, which gave us a hint that he was able to get access to the doctor's pens as and when he needed to, which meant that he was able to pin the blame on him. Overall review This first Saw movie is the one that I truly believe is the best in the franchise because the ending was something that I just did not expect to happen at all. I was so excited when John Kramer stood up and the reveal was played back to us and every hint and clue was explained by Kramer. It's a real intimate movie where conversation is at the heart of it and the emotions that get delivered are what allows the investment and payoff to feel like a reward. This movie is everything that was good about the Saw franchise in the early days of its creation and I feel with Saw X coming out and it being set between the first and second movie, I hope that it will channel what was so good about the original, because if this first movie was released for the first time today, it would have the same if not a larger impact than what it had back then, showing that the quality in the story and the experience is definitely there. With this movie now complete, on to the second. So, there you have it, Saw 1 broken down and ending explained. What do you think of the first movie? Be sure to come back for a breakdown of Saw 2 as that will be getting released next Sunday. If you want to see what I've already rated the movie, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's already been rated. Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.